culture in the land, and if you can't attract and hold on to a desirable mate with desirable genes, you're a loser. Carbon cycle modeling and paleo temperature records argue that an asteroid impact, not a volcanic fumes, was the main driver of the dinosaur dial, a reign which had lasted 180 million years abruptly ended. What exactly happened? And how was the impact event discovered? Could the dinosaurs have survived? Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The impact site, known as the Chicula Crater, is centered on the Volcatan Peninsula in Mexico. The asteroid is thought to have been between 10 and 15 kilometers wide, but the velocity of its collision caused the creation of a much larger crater, 150 kilometers in diameter, the second largest crater on the planet. The Cretaceous Paleogene, KPG extinction event, also known as the Cretaceous Tertiary, KT extinction, was a sudden mass extinction of three quarters of the plant and animal species on Earth approximately 66 million years ago. With the exception of some ethothermeric species, such as the sea turtles and crocodilians, no tetrapods weighing more than 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, survived. It marked the end of the Cretaceous period, and with it the end of the entire Mesozoic era, opening the Cenozoic era that continues today. Debris from the explosion was thrown into the atmosphere, severely altering the climate and leading to the extinction of roughly three quarters of the species that existed at that time, including the dinosaurs. Many asteroids of this type are now known. Their orbits pass through the inner solar system and cross Earth's orbit. Some of those could potentially hit Earth in the future. Most, but not all, are smaller than the one that hit us 65 million years ago. Asteroids hit Earth typically at high speeds of 16 to 32 kilometers a second, 10 to 20 miles per second. During the impact, the kinetic energy in the asteroid, or energy of motion, is converted to explosive energy, blowing debris of dust, soil, and rocks, not only into the atmosphere, but out into space, where it falls back into the top of the atmosphere. Early calculations in the 1980s, using past ideas worked out by Carl Sagan and his colleagues, show that so much dust entered the high atmosphere that the Earth was shrouded in a dust layer that blocked sunlight for several weeks or months. This would have killed some plants, disrupting the food chain. Later calculations, especially by Jay Malosh of the University of Arizona, indicated that for the first few hours after the impact, rocky debris would have fallen back into the high atmosphere, creating a storm of glowing fireballs in the sky. The radiant energy from these would have heated the surface to boiling temperatures for some minutes, and would have been enough to kill many animals and plants on the surface. However, in regions of heavy rainstorms or snowstorms, these organisms would have survived the first few hours. Sea creatures would have been buffeted from the effects in the first hours, but plankton on the surface might have died out over the weeks of darkness, decreasing the food supply for small fish, which affected the big fish, and so on. These examples show how hard it is to predict the exact effect of the impact. Many species who lived on the surface, such as dinosaurs, might have been decimated in hours or weeks. Species who lived in burrows or hibernated, like some mammals, might have survived. This may explain why mammals replaced giant reptiles after the impact. Tiny primitive mammals may have emerged from their dens to find that their giant reptile competitors were mostly gone. In 1980, Nobel Prize winning physicist Louis Walter Alvarez and his geologist son Walter published a theory that a historic layer of iridium rich clay was caused by a large asteroid colliding with Earth. The instantaneous devastation in the immediate vicinity and the widespread secondary effects of an asteroid impact were considered to be why the dinosaurs died out so suddenly. For about 10 years, this theory was extremely controversial. However, compelling evidence has accumulated to support this theory. There are now many lines of evidence to prove that a relatively large impact happened 65 million years ago. The iridium excess in the 65 million year old soil layer has been confirmed in many points around the world. The same soil layer contains grains of quartz that were deformed by high shock pressures, as would occur in the giant explosion. The deformation is a microscopic structure called twinning, in the crystals. The same soil layer contains enough soot to correspond to burning down all the forests of the world. This suggests that massive fires were touched off at the time of the impact. The same soil layer, especially around the Gulf of Mexico, contains massive deposits of tumbled boulders, as would be generated in a large tsunami, or tidal wave. The geographic distribution of tsunami deposits suggests impact was in the Caribbean area. After a decade of searching, scientists in 1990 identified the crater associated with this material. It is no longer visible on the surface of the Earth, but is buried under sediments. It straddles the coast of Yucatan, 
It is revealed by mapping the strength of the gravity field over the area and by drilling. It has been dated to 65 million years old. Astronomers have charted numerous asteroids that cross Earth's orbit. From studies of the orbit statistics, it is estimated that asteroids of 10 kilometer size can hit the Earth roughly every 100 million years or so, which fits with the idea that we actually did get hit 65 million years ago by an object this size. Smaller hits are much more common. There is research to suggest that if the impact had occurred elsewhere on the planet, the fate of life on Earth would have been very different. If it had fallen just minutes later, the asteroid would have landed in deeper water, causing less rock to vaporize and rise to block out the sun's light and warmth. This would have lowered the chances of a mass extinction. But if the dinosaur's reign hadn't been abruptly ended by an asteroid, Paul thinks that we might have seen some, other than birds, around today. <laughs>